Have you ever heard about clean architecture? You must have heard it, but do you know what it is exactly? Clean architecture is the blueprint for a modular system, which strictly follows the design principle called separation of concerns. More specifically, this style of architecture focuses on dividing software into layers to simplify the development and maintenance of the system itself. When layers are well separated, individual pieces can be reused as well as developed and updated independently. Clean architecture is one of the most powerful solutions to build clean apps with independent data layers that multiple teams can work on. The resulting app would also be scalable, readable, testable, and can be easily maintained at any time. As we can see in the diagram, we have three main layers of the architecture, data, domain, and the feature layer, which is the same as the presentation layer. We also have two additional supporting layers, the resources and shared library. Presentation layer. This layer presents the app content and triggers events that modify the application state. This layer has three parts. Pages part which include application pages. State management part which contains files related to state management that we use, such as block or riverpod or other state managements. And the widgets parts, which includes all the specific widgets that we use on the pages. Domain layer. Domain layer is the innermost part of the layers and has no dependency on other layers. It contains entities, repository interfaces, and use cases. The domain layer would be written purely in Dart without any flutter elements. The reason is that the domain should only be concerned with the business logic of the application, not with the implementation details. The entities must be our data types or classes that are used in different parts of our software. Or in other word, we define in our version of Clean that our entities are the objects that can be returned to us or we can send to an API. Repositories and domain layer are abstract classes or contracts, and define the properties and methods that our project will need in a specific feature. Use cases include application-specific business rules. Each event is an interaction of the user with the system and we can call this a use case, like sign up, login and other interactions. Use cases are nothing more than a bridge between layers, it's a single call to business logic. Data layer. The data module, which is a part of the outermost layer, is responsible for data retrieval. This can be in the form of API calls to a server or a local database. It also contains repository implementations. This layer has three parts. One of the parts is the repository part. It includes actual implementations of the repositories in the domain layer. Repositories are responsible to coordinate data from the different data sources. The other part is the data source. It consists of remote and local data sources. Remote data source will perform HTTP requests on the API, while local data source will cache or persist data. And the last part is models, which representation of JSON structure and allows us to interact with our data sources. Now let's go to create the folder structure in the project. The first folder that we need to create is the features folder. Every feature that the app has is placed inside this folder, for example the auth feature. Every feature of the app will be divided into three main layers, presentation, domain and data layers. So for each feature we have to create these three folders. As we said before, the presentation layer has three parts called pages, state management for example block and the widgets part. And also as I explained, the domain layer has three parts called use cases, entities, and repository. We will create these as well. And finally we have to create folders for the data layer. In the data layer, we have three parts named repository, data sources, and models. Apart from the features folder we can have other folders in the project. Usually we have two folders, config and core. In the configs folder we put project-related configurations such as theme or routes. And in the core folder we usually pull anything which has to be shared between multiple features into the core folder such as network, error, util, or use cases. So in general the structure of the project with clean architecture will be like this, but we may have other folders. But the base structure is like this. In the next videos, we will do many projects with clean architecture, so stay with us. Here we're going to be explaining and building a simple news app that gets its data from REST API and also caches the data locally in the devices. It's a lot of work, patience and focusing on how we will implement each part of the app in a very pretty clean way. And the final results will be awesome. The first thing we need to do is to add the packages that we need to use in the project. The first package we add is Flutter Block, which we will use to manage the state. We will also use the Equatable package, a Flutter package that makes comparing Dart objects by equality is much easier. We use this package in Block State's classes. The next package is Getit. This is a simple service locator for Dart and Flutter projects with some additional goodies highly inspired by Splat. It can be used instead of inherited widget or provider to access objects from our UI. We also need the intel package for the date format. The next package is Floor. Floor is a type-safe, reactive, lightweight source code generator package that uses the SQLite to store its data locally. It's again inspired by Android Room. To make requests to the API we use Retrofit. Retrofit is a source code generator package that uses Dio as an HTTP client to generate the proper methods that we need to deal with REST APIs based on abstraction. It's inspired by the Android Retrofit. The next package is Flutter Hooks. Hooks are a new kind of object that manage the life cycle of a widget. 
They exist for one reason, increase the code sharing between widgets by removing duplicates. And finally, we should also use the cache network image package. This is a Flutter library to show images from the internet and keep them in the cache directory. Also before we forget, we must add retrofit and floor generators along with build runner and dev dependencies. Our work is almost finished in PubSpec. Here at last we just have to define the fonts that we will use in the project. Now we go to the folder structure. As we mentioned before, we will use clean architecture in this project. The first folder that we need to create is the features folder. Every feature that the app has is placed inside this folder. For example, display daily news is a feature. Every feature of the app will be divided into three main layers, presentation, domain, and data layers. So for each feature, we have to create these three folders. As we said before, the presentation layer has three parts called pages, state management, for example, block and the widgets part. The domain layer has three parts called use cases, entities, and repository. We will create these as well. And finally, we have to create folders for the data layer. In the data layer, we have three parts named repository, data sources, and models. Apart from the features folder, we can have other folders in the project. Usually we have two folders, config and core. In the configs folder, we put project-related configurations such as theme or routes. And in the core folder, we usually pull anything which has to be shared between multiple features into the core folder such as util or use cases. We may create some folders later. In the next part, we will go to the features folder and start implementing different parts of the features. Welcome to the second part. In this part, we will go to the domain layer and then we will define entities and create classes. I'm going to be needing you to be focused because we have a lot of work to do. So grab your coffee and let's get into it. We need to prepare things before we start implementing the layers. So the first thing we need is to write some resources required to implement our logic properly. First, we create a folder named resources in core. Then we create a file inside it named data state, which contains the following code. This abstracted base class is very handy when we come to the fact that we're about to communicate with network calls, but how? In order to determine the state of the request being sent to the server and its response, this wrapper class can be used to wrap our entire network call which is so important later on when we will have too many requests in logic, you will see how minimized the code would become. As you can see in the code, we've two different states, one when we get a successful response, and the other is used when an error occurs while sending the request or receiving the response. When you are going to start a project from scratch, which part do you code first? In my case, I code the classes of the data that I'm going to use throughout my entire application. I consider this to be a good practice as it helps us lay down the information that will flow through all of our logic. This means that we have to start from the domain layer. Domain is the inner layer which shouldn't be susceptible to the whims of changing data sources. It will contain only the core business logic and business objects. It should be totally independent of every other layer. In the domain layer, we must first specify our entities. What are the entities? Entities are business objects of an application or system. Now with this definition, what are the entities of news app? To find entity, just answer this question. What kind of data will the news app operate with? As you probably understood, the answer is article entity. Now to find out which fields article class must have, we have to take a look at the response from the news API. If we pay attention to the response, we can see that the article has fields such as title, description, content, and other fields that you can see. We must define the fields in the article entity class that the application needs. Now we go back to the entities folder, and create a file called article and inside it we define a class called article entity. Then we define the fields we need and also define the constructor of the class with these fields. And finally, the class must extend equatable. It extends equatable to allow for easy value comparisons. This will help us later in managing state in the block. Equatable comes with props property, which has its own purpose in object comparison. Props property decides which objects we should consider for object comparison. Props is a getter method that will return list of objects. Here object can be of any type. We have to simply return a list of all the objects that are available in our class. Welcome to the third part. In this part, we are going to work on the repository. Repository is the bridge between the data layer and the domain layer. Actual implementations of the repositories in the data layer. Repositories are responsible for coordinating data from the different data sources. The repository at the domain layer is in the form of an abstract class in which there are functions that still need to be implemented. So it is in the repository at the data layer that we will start implementing the abstract classes. First, we create a folder called repositories in the domain, and then create a file inside it called article repository. If you remember, we said that the domain layer contains only the interfaces, and the implementations will be in the data layer. So now we define an abstracted class named article repository. 
Now here we have to define our methods. Currently we have a method called get news articles that returns a future data of type article entity list, which wrapped with the data state to determine the state of the response. Now we have to implement the repository we created. As we said before the implementation should be done in the data layer. But before we do the implementation, we need to create the article model. Therefore, first we create a file called article in the data layer and in the models folder. Then here we define a class called article model. Article model fields are the same as article entity fields and also has a from JSON method. So here we extend the article entity and then define the fields. And finally, we create the from JSON method in this way. Now you may have a question. Why do we need a model and not use entity? Because as we said before, the domain layer must be independent and not depend on other layers. And if we want to use entity instead model in the data layer, we may change our database in the future or use XML instead of JSON and have to change the entity, which is against the rule of clean architecture. Now the next step is to implement the article repository. In the repository folder, we create a file called article repository and then define a class inside it called article repository implementation. Now for implementation, it is enough to use the keyword implements in front of the class name and then type the class that we want to implement, which is the article repository class in the domain folder. If we look at the error, we will find that the error says that you should implement the get news article function. This is the same function that we defined in domain as abstract. Therefore, in this way, we create the define method for implementation. Now here, instead of returning a list of article entities, the method should return a list of article model, because we should not use entities in the data layer. Now here we have to get the list of articles from the API and return it. So stay with me in the next video. Things are getting a little bit interesting here. As we all know, we're talking about articles, news, and stuff like that. But where is that service that provides us the data we need? Do I have to write everything myself? Absolutely no, because we're going to using the retrofit package that uses the DO as a network client. The first thing we have to do is to create a folder called remote in the data source folder, because later we want to work with the local database we will also create folder called local. As we said we will use the retrofit package to request the server, we already made a video about it. Please watch it first and then come back here. Now we create a file called news API service. Here we first define an abstract class called news API service. This class is responsible for handling all the network call methods. Because retrofit generates code, we must specify the .g file with part at the top of the file. In our case it will be news API service .g .dart. Also we need to use REST API annotation and pass the API base URL to it, so the generator will know it's a retrofit interface. To set the base URL, we create a folder called constants in core and then create a new file called constants inside it. Now here we define a string type variable named base URL and set the API URL. Now we go back to the news API service class and set the base URL. Then also we need create a factory constructor that accepts DO. The last thing we need to do is to define the method that we are going to make a request to the API. Therefore, in the abstract class we define a future method called get news articles, which returns a list of article model. The return type here is wrapped with class called HTTP response and this is because we need details about our response such as status and message. This is very helpful for us to determine certain things once we get the response, like whether we get a successful response or some server errors. We do not implement this method. Any of this supposed to be implemented by the retrofit generator. Now it is enough to determine what method this is. That's why we have to use HTTP annotation. Therefore, we must use retrofit annotations, as you know the type of request we send to the API is get. Retrofit uses the base URL that we defined above and now we need to put the in and point in get, which can be top headlines according to the API URL. If we pay attention to the API URL we can see that there are parameters such as API key, country and categories. We must also set these parameters in our request. For this in the get news articles method, we set these parameters as input by using query annotation, so that when calling this method, we pass these three parameters to it. In this abstracted method, we're basically telling the retrofit to generate a method for us that can internally uses the DO to make a get network call to an endpoint named top headlines with the base URL we provided at the top of the class, and also takes multiple query parameters as defined in the function's parameters. And that's it, we don't need to write anything else. To generate the code, run the following command in your terminal. In the next video we will use the news API service class in the repository and we will also go to the use case part. So stay with me.
As you know, in the previous video we discussed the implementation of sending requests to API using Retrofit. In this video, we want to call the get news articles function and also go to the use case folder. Let's go back to the article repository implementation class. Here, the first thing we have to do is to create an instance of the news API service, which is accepted by the class constructor. Now using the news API service instance, we call the get news articles method and set the return result in a field called HTTP response. We also need to set API key, country and category parameters for the get news articles function. Since we are not going to use variable values and the values are constant, that is why we define these values in the constants file. And then we set here. Now in the next step, we will check that if sending the request to the server was successful, we will return data success along with the list of articles, which will be HTTP response.data. This data success extends the data state class and we defined it in the resources folder. And we use it when our request is successful. And if the request to API is not successful, we will return data failed to which we must pass DO error. And we also set the value of DO error parameters using HTTP response like this. And finally, in order to be safe from unknown and unexpected errors, we put our request in the try catch. And in catch, we use DO error and return date failed. Our work is finished here. Now we have to check the use cases. But before checking, let me briefly explain what is a use case. Use cases are where the business logic gets executed. All a use case will do is getting data from a repository. Now we are going to have one of them, like get article use case. When it comes to use cases, every single one of them should have a call method. It doesn't matter if the logic inside the use case gets us an article or sends a space shuttle to the moon. The interface should be the same to prevent any confusion. Now let's go to create get article use case. But as I said, all use cases have a call method. So for clean code, we first create a basic use case so that the rest of the classes implement the basic use case. Therefore, in core we create a folder called use case. Then inside it we create a file called use case. Here, first we create an abstract class called use case which has two inputs, type and params. These are called generic types. As I said, all user cases have a method named call, so we create the call method, which returns the type, and also takes params in its input. In the call method, we get the data we need from the repository. We are done here. Now we have to go to create the get article use case. Go to the domain folder. Here in the use cases folder, we create a file called get article. Now here we first define a class called get article use case. Now we use the implements keyword and implement the basic use case that we created a few minutes ago. Now we set the generic types here. The value returned by the call function is the article entity that wrapped with the data state to determine the state of the response. And in params, since we don't need a parameter, we just type a void. The reason for this error is that we must implement and override the call method. We can do it this way. As we showed in the data flow, the use case gets the data from the repository and returns it. So we define an instance of the article repository and set it in the class constructor. Then by calling the get news articles method, we get the data from the repository and return it. In the next video, we will go to the presentation layer, so stay with me. In the previous videos, we talked about the domain and data layers and worked on those layers. In this video, we want to go to the presentation layer and create blocks. So stay with me. The first thing we do is create a folder called article and block. Now inside this, we will create another folder named remote. Because later we will create another block to display the article from the database, which will be in the local folder. As you probably know, we should have three files in our block, event, state, and block files. So I create them. I want to start from the state file. Because many of you are familiar with block, I don't want to explain too much. As you know we have to define states here. The first thing we do is define a basic state that the rest of the states must extend. So, I define an abstract class called remote article state that extends equatable. Here we will have two parameters, a list of article entity and DO error. We will pass the list of articles when the request to the server is successful, and we will pass the DO error when the request to the server is not successful. I also define these parameters in the constructor. Using the props method in equatable, I determine that these two parameters are considered when comparing the states. We will have three states. The first case is that when we request the server and wait for the server to return the data, in this case we must show loading. So we have a state called remote articles loading. The next state will be when the data has been received and we have to display it. So we also define a state called remote articles done which must have a list of articles in its constructor. And the last case is when we have a problem in receiving data from the server and we have to display an error. Therefore, I will create a state called remote articles error which has DO error in the constructor. The definition of the states is completed. Now we have to define the events. The definition of events is the same as the definition of states. First, we define an abstract class named remote articles event. 
We will have only one event that we will call and receive data from the server. So we will define an event called get articles that extends remote articles event. Now we need to create the block class because many of you are familiar with block. That's why I won't go into details and explain more deeply. The first thing we need to do is define a class called remote articles block that extends block. We must specify an initial state by passing it to the superclass via super. We can determine loading state as initial state. As you know, we have to register the get article event. So, we create a method called on get articles that has the event and state in its input. Now we register the get articles event in the event handler like this. Now we need to get the data from the server in the on get articles method using the get articles use case, and then display them using the remote articles done state. So first we need to create an instance of get article use case that the constructor accepts. In the next video, we will register the get article use case class by injecting dependency in the constructor. Now in the on get article method, we must call the get article use case. Did you know that in Dart a method named call can be run both by calling object.call and also by object? That's the perfect method to use in the use cases. So we call in this way and save the response returned by the call method in the data state. The return value is the data state, so we have to check if the data state is equal to success and the data is not empty, we emit the remote article's done state. And we also pass the data. And if the data state is equal to data failed, we emit the remote article's error state and pass the error. The implementation of the block is finished. In the next video, we will go to dependency injection. So stay with me. The idea is simple. We want a reliable way to register and access all objects inside our app. For this we need to use service locator pattern. Get it is the most used package to implement the service locator pattern in Flutter. Get it allows us to register all objects and their dependencies at startup and access all registered objects from a single source. Let's look at a simple example. For example, this API class contains the code necessary to communicate with the joke API used in the app. The network calls made to the joke API is handled by the client class from the HTTP package. If you pay attention, the API class is dependent on the client class, and the most basic way to inject this dependency would be to pass it through the constructor. This way when you need the API class somewhere else in your codebase, you would have to pass in the client class. Now in a situation where we also use dependency injection where the API class is needed. To call home screen somewhere in the codebase we would pass in the API class it depends on, and also pass in the client class that the API class depends on. I'm sure we can see how things can easily get out of hand when we try to access classes with multiple dependencies across multiple places. This is where Getit comes in. With Getit we simply register our Dart objects and the classes they depend on, which can then be easily accessed from anywhere. The first thing we have to do is create a file in the lib folder called injection container. Now here, first we need to import the Getit package. Then we need to find an instance of Getit using getit.instance. We must define the instance globally so that we can access this instance in all files and anywhere. This instance is going to hold all the dependencies we need. Next step is to create a method named initialize dependencies which would be called before run app. It will be inside this function where all the classes and contracts will be registered and subsequently also injected using the singleton instance of getit stored inside sl. Using getit, classes can be registered in two ways, factory and singleton. With factory registration, when you request an instance of the class from getit, you'll get a new instance every time. Good for registering view models that need to run the same logic on start or that has to be new when the view is open. With Singleton, yet it keeps a single instance of your registered type for the rest of the app's lifetime and will always return you that instance when requested. We're going to register everything as a singleton, which means that only one instance of a class will be created for the app's lifetime. The first class that we can register is the news API service class. The registration process is very straightforward. To register, we must use the register singleton method. Now here we have to pass the class name as tParameter. Then we just instantiate the class as usual and pass an SL into every constructor parameter like this. Because news API service accepts DO in the constructor and depends on DO, we must register DO before news API service in the same way. Then here, pass SL to news API service. The next step is to register the article's repository. Notice that they depend on the contract and not on the concrete implementation. However, we cannot instantiate a contract which is an abstract class. Instead, we have to instantiate the implementation of the repository. Then we need to register the use cases. So, we register the get article use case. And finally, we have to register the blocks. Presentation logic holders such as block shouldn't be registered as singleton. Because your block will return the new instance when the state was changed. For now, we are done here. In the next video, we will go to the presentation layer and display the news. So stay with me. 
In the previous video we implemented service locator and registered classes and dependencies. Finally, in this video we want to show the news list on the home page. But before doing anything we must call initialize dependency and run app. So I go to the main file and before the run app method I call the function and also use await. Now in the presentation and inside pages, we create a folder called home and then create a file inside it called daily news. Here we first create a stateless class called daily news. Then we return a scaffold in the build method. To show the changes, we need to set daily news as the home and material app. Now first we have to set app bar in the scaffold. So, we define a widget called build app bar that returns app bar. In the title, we set daily news text and then set its color to black using style. In order to be able to use the fonts we have defined and set a theme for the app bar, it is better to define a theme. For this, we create a file called app themes in the config and theme folder. Now here we define a theme method named theme which returns a theme data. Here, we need set the background color and also the font name. We also need to define a theme for the app bar, so we define a method called app bar theme and inside it we return the app bar theme. Now here we determine the background color, elevation, center title, as well as the theme of the icons and the text style of the title. And finally to apply the theme, we must set the theme in the material app. The next step is to display the news list. For this we define a widget called build body. As you know we use block to display news, so we return the block builder in the build body and set remote articles block and remote articles state. Now let's check the states in the builder. If the articles are being loaded, we will display a circular progress indicator. If there is a problem in fetching the articles from the server, we will display a refresh icon. And if the fetching of the articles is successful, we will return a list view builder. In the list view builder, we set the item count equal to the length of the articles. And in the item builder, we currently return a list tile to test the block to see if it works correctly or not. Now we set the build body in the scaffold and the body property and then refresh the app. As you can see, we ran into a problem. This error tells us that we must provide the block for the desired context. One way to fix this error is to wrap the material app inside the block provider and set the block we want. That is the remote articles block. Now here in create, we have to determine that when the block is created, the get articles event should be called and executed. And now we refresh again. The origin of this error goes back to get article use case and remote article block because the value of get article use case is not determined. To solve such problems, we use Serif's locator. To solve this problem, it is enough to use SL instead of block provider and create. The block problem is solved and our block is working well, but we don't see any data. There must be a problem in receiving data. The best way to find out what the problem is is to print the error in remote articles block. The first step to fix the error is to check the API response. And let's compare it with the fromJSON method to see if it maps correctly or not. As we can see we have a list called articles in the API response, but in fromJSON we did not map to this articles. To fix this problem we need to change the file generated by retrofit. Therefore, we open the file and where it returns the result, we determine that it also considers articles like this. This error is due to the fact that the list cannot be mapped. To solve this problem, we just need to change list to map here. And finally, to solve this problem, we have to change the value type from bar to article model list. Now we restart again. Finally we are succeeding. Now it is enough to specify the type of map we want to return in the map, and we have to set the article model like this. Now restart again and see that the data fetching and display work correctly. And in the last step, we have to work on UI. Because we don't want to work on UI and our main goal is to teach clean architecture. That's why I didn't implement UI in this video. I implemented it separately and placed it in the widgets folder in home. Now it is enough to return the article widget in the list view builder. And finally, now we restart again. You can see that the news is being displayed correctly. In the next video we will go to the local database, so stay with me. In the previous videos, we worked on the online part of the app and were able to make a request to the API and get the news from the API and finally display it.
In this video, we want to start working on the offline part and create the local database. We will use the floor package for the database. The floor database is inspired by the room persistence library. It comes with automatic mapping between in-memory objects and database rows while still offering full control of the database with the use of SQL. It is a layer that sits on top of an SQLite database and makes it easier to use. The floor plugin uses the architecture pattern data access objects or DAO. If you are working on a project then you might separate it into layers. For example presentation layer contains UI, then domain layer contains business logic. Then we have the data access layer which would be the layer communicating with the database. Therefore in that layer one can use the DAO pattern. The DAO is basically an interface or abstract class in which you declare different methods that will add, delete, update or read from the database. Without using the DAO pattern, you would have to manually write the code to perform those operations which could be error prone. Before creating the abstract class, we need to create an entity class. The entity class would represent a table in the database, therefore the class name will be the table name and the fields will be the columns in the table. We have the article entity right now, and this class is supposed to be converted into a table in the database. But as we said before, we should not use entity in the data layer and we should use the model instead. Therefore we open the article model. To convert a class into a table, we must use entity annotation to mark a class as an entity class. We use the annotation at entity above the class declaration. Then we set the table name inside it. Since every table has a primary key, therefore we set field ID as primary key like this. After creating the entity class, we now need to create the DAO or data access object abstract class. To do this, first we create a folder called DAO and data sources. Then we create a file called article DAO inside this. Now we define an abstract class called article DAO. We need use the annotation at DAO to mark the abstract class as a data access object. We will have three methods, insert, delete, and get. First, we define a method called insert article. This method is supposed to insert the articles in the database. To be able to insert articles in the database, all we have to do is annotate the method with the at insert annotation. We do exactly the same for the delete method. We define a method called delete article, then use the delete annotation. To fetch the inserted articles, we first define a method called get articles, which returns a list of article models. We don't have annotation to fetch and we have to write a SQL query. For this we can use query annotation and write the desired query inside it. The implementation of article DAO is finished and now we have to create the database of the application. To do this, we first create a file in the local folder called app database. Then inside it we define an abstract class called app database which extends floor database. Now we need annotate the class with the at database annotation, which we also provide a list of entities. Now to be able to access the methods declared in the article DAO abstract class, we create an abstract getter method like this. As you may know floor uses generator, so we need to add this line above the class definition. Now open the terminal and run this command to generate the codes. To fix these errors, it is enough to import these libraries in the app database file. The implementation of the database is finished, now we have to call the method that creates the database somewhere. As you guessed we have to do this in injection container. Therefore, we open injection container file and build the database in this way. We use the generated class floor app database to be able to create the database under the name app database.db. And finally, we have to register the app database class like this. Now we have delete the app and run it again. To fix this error, it is enough to call ensure initialized using widgets flutter binding before calling initialized dependencies. Now restart the app again. We will see that the app runs without any problems. In order to understand whether the database has been created correctly or not, we must use the DB browser software. I will put the link of this software in the description. To use this software, we have to open Android Studio and find the project package name from the device browser and export the database in this way and import it in the DB browser. As you can see the article table is displayed, so everything is okay. In the next video we will use the database, so stay with me. In the previous video, we created app database using floor package. Then we define the article DAO class and the methods we will need. In this video we are going to use these methods and implement the repository and use cases. The first thing we need to do is to add the database methods in the article repository class inside domain layer, and then implement them in the data layer. Therefore we open the article repository file in the domain layer. As you know we have three methods in article DAO. Get articles, save article and delete article. So, we add the methods like this. The reason for the error in the article repository implementation class is that we have to implement these three new methods that we added. To implement, the first thing we have to do is to define an instance of the app database class that the class constructor accepts. Now using this we can access the article DAO and use its methods in the implementation. For example, in the get saved articles method, 
we can use the getArticles method in ArticleDAO and return the list of articles. Just note that we should not use entity in data layer and we should change this to model. We do the same in remove article and return the delete article using app database. And finally in the save article method, we call the insert article method like this. The reason for these errors is that the insert and delete methods in the database accept the article model, but what we send is the article entity. To solve this problem, we define a from entity method in the model, which takes the entity and converts it to a model. And now we use this method. The last step is to define the use cases of the database. The first use case we want to define is get saved article, so we will create a file called get saved article use case. Now let's do the same thing here exactly like the previous use case that we used to fetch news, so I will copy the codes of that use case and paste it here. Now here, first I change the name of the class to get saved article use case, then I change the return value from data state to a list of article entity. I do exactly the same thing in the call method. And finally, instead of get article, we call the get saved article method. We have to do these things for two other methods, save article and remove article. First we create a new file called save article use case, then I copy the get saved article use case codes and paste it here. Now first I change the name of the class to save article use case. When we want to save the article we don't return anything, so here I put void instead of article entity in data. And because we have to get an article and save it, I set article entity in the parameter. I also apply these changes in the call method. And finally, I call the save article method. For the remove article method, we have to do exactly the same thing, only we have to use remove instead of save, so I do it. We are almost done with the database and finally we have to go to the injection container. First let's fix this error. This error is related to the fact that we set the app database in the article repository implementation constructor, and now we have to pass here, and it is enough to pass a cell. The last thing we need to do is to register the three cases we created like this. In the next video, which is the last part, we will complete the presentation and implement the saving and deletion of news. So stay with me. In the previous video, we added the database methods to the layers and created their use cases. In this video, we want to use these use cases and save the article in the database, delete it and display the articles we saved. The first thing I want to do is to create the local block. So I create a folder called local. Then we create block, state and event files. We have three events, get saved article, remove article, and save article. So we have defined these three events. First, we define an abstract class called local articles event, which has the article entity in the constructor. Now to define the three events, we need extend the local articles event. Because many of you know the block, I will not go into the details. We have two states, local articles loading, which is for displaying the loading, and local articles done. After the articles are fetched, we use this state and display the articles. Like events, first we define an abstract class called local articles state which has a list of article entities in the constructor. Now we define classes by extending local articles state. Now we define local articles block and set event and state. Here first we need to define instance of the use cases that we should use, which are also accepted in the class constructor. Now we must specify an initial state by passing it to the superclass via super that we set the local articles loading. The next step is to create methods and use use cases. The first method we need to create is called on get saved article. In this method, we fetch the list of saved articles using get saved article use case and emit local articles done state to display articles. The next method we need to define is remove article. In this method, we remove the article from the database using the remove article use case. And finally, I call the on get saved articles method to fetch the list of articles from the database and display the updated list. And finally, we need to define the save method. The save method is exactly like the remove method. But instead of using remove, we have to use save. Now there is only one thing left and that is to register these methods in the event handler like this. An event handler is responsible for converting any incoming events into zero or more outgoing states. One thing we forgot. In the save and remove methods we did not set the article we want to save or delete in the use cases parameter. So we do this like this. The block implementation is finished and now we have to go to the UI. As we said in the previous videos, our goal in this tutorial is not UI and we use simple UIs that no need to teach. And you can check and understand the source code. First of all we have to register created the block in the injection container. We do it exactly like the remote article block, so we do it the same way and set SL for the use cases that are in constructor.
I created a new page called Article Detail which accepts article entity and its constructor and displays article details such as image, title, and description. In the Daily News page, I defined a method that when we click on the article, we go to the Article Detail page. In the Article Details page, I defined a method called on floating action button press, which I call when the bookmark icon is clicked. And using the save article event that we define in the local article block, I save the article in the database and then show a snack bar. And to display the saved articles, I created a page called Saved Articles, where we fetch the saved articles in the database using the Get Saved Articles event, and then display them. This is so simple. To access this page, I created an icon in the app bar of the Daily News page. And when we click on it, we go to the Saved Article page. As you can see here, we have a minus icon. When we click on it, we call the onRemoveArticle method, and then in this method, we delete the article from the database using the Remove Article event. This was the last part of the news app project with Clean Architecture. In this project, I tried to teach Clean Architecture with a project. We fetched and displayed the news from the API and then we were able to save the article in the database or delete it from the database. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for supporting. See you in the next project. And make to sure hit the subscribe button to get next video.